Did you know that there are about 10 programs under which you can immigrate to Canada? Now based on your requirements, you might pick any one of these programs but this video is going to be about the Express Entry program which is kind of the most popular program really and if you are belonging to the working class, if you are well educated, if you are planning to or even now working in the industry well this is the program for you and using this program you can actually find yourself in Canada according to the things that we are going to talk about in this video so stay tuned you see most of these Canadian programs which get you to actually immigrate to Canada are based on a point based system so really what is a point based system so the point based system is something that you may not find in other countries but what happens is really if I had to say in the simplest terms well let's say you'll be given points for your age you'll be given points for your education your work experience anything on your profile based on that the Canadian government has actually selected some qualities your language ability also really all of those qualities come into the picture and on the basis of that you have some predefined points which you get for each of these qualities and really your total score is the sum of all of these points when you add these points up what you get is your total score you see the IRCC launches a draw every 15 days once that 15 day mark hits they release a score and everyone who is above that score like I told you the, your score will be a sum of all of those scores I told you about based on the qualities we'll get into the details of that but really so if you happen to have a score that is greater than that score well you will get an invitation to apply it's called the ITA an invitation to apply so you'll get that and on the basis of that you can get yourself a permanent visa all right this permanent residency visa you have to really file the ITA within the two months so really when you get the invitation you have to file for it within the next 60 days and if you do that you will get your PR alright now one thing that I want to make clear in this video is there are three programs under the Express Entry program the first is the Federal Skilled Workers program on which we will focus on primarily in this video alright the other two are again very similar but the second one is the Federal Skilled Trades programs and what really happens in that program is people who are from different occupations they don't have to belong to the industry to the business class they can be from any occupation let's say there's a plumber there's there's an electrician all these kinds of people really farmers anyone can actually apply to get a PR for Canada all right now the third program is called the Canadian experience class program and it's a little bit different from both of these programs I mentioned earlier really if you have any work experience in Canada then this program might be the one for you so my primary audience is usually people who don't really have any Canadian work experience so in this case we will see about the federal skilled workers program alright so let's quickly hop onto the computer over here and let's see what the actual requirements are and how many points you can actually score alright okay so the first thing that you get points for over here is your age okay so most of the people who are watching this video I'm assuming that you have 20 to 29 years of age so depending on whether you have a spouse or whether you do not have a spouse on the basis of that you will get different points as you can see in the video alright so let's say you are 25 and you are not married in that case you will get 110 points all right so this is how it works really depending on your age you can see how many points you can actually score all right so let's move on to the next parameter over here and the next thing is your level of education all right again this will also depend on whether you are married or not see you'll see that in most cases if you have a spouse or if you do not really it, it really depends and uh, in most cases if you do not have a spouse you will benefit of course alright so your level of education okay so depending on whether you went to high school whether you were uh, in a post secondary program whether you have a PhD whether you have a university level uh, a credential 
whatever it is on the basis of that really you can see your score on the chart and really add the score to the previous score so suppose it uh, supposedly if you had your previous score as 110 now if you have university level credentials at master's level you will score 126 more all right so the next thing you actually get more points for is your language proficiency now there can be two types of language proficiencies really it depends on the language first is if you have any knowledge of English which most of you guys do if you're watching this video and second is on the basis of French so again if some of you guys do not understand French or do not know really uh, you know how to communicate your points in French really don't worry about it you should just leave this because uh, you know I'll, I'll tell you about the English one right now it's a little complicated so like, so stick stick around but really don't focus on learning a new language just to gain citizenship of another country because that is I believe it's not really needed I believe in some in most cases it's not needed because there's so many other criteria that you can resort to that you can really you know look up to and it's much much easier to actually upgrade your scores on those criteria as compared to the language French alright so we'll focus on the English part alright so really people do get confused over here because the scores see you need to take the IELTS test that's I-E-L-T-S IELTS it's an English language test alright and uh, really your scores are very much different to the criteria mentioned over here you'll see that you have CLBs and CLB is really not something that IELTS really gives out scores to. So CLB are really different slabs that uh, you know you don't need to worry about. You can convert your CLB score to your IELTS score and vice versa. So let's actually go onto a website and let's see how these scores are mapped. By the way, if you have a CLB nine or ten, you are really good to go. Definitely, if you have, if you have a CLB ten, you will get. 34 points without a spouse so that looks a lot good a lot better than any other scores all right so if you have you know a little low level of proficiency you can really increase your level of proficiency of english and get these points easily all right so let's hop on to that website that i was talking about this is the website all right so depending on your clb score see this is the clb one that's selected right now so the minimum you can get on the ielts is one for listening reading writing and speaking each all right and uh, in that case your CLB is just you know one and you are doing really bad there but all right let's let's take a look at CLB CLB 8 let's see all right this is CLB 8 you have 7.5 on the listening you have 6.5 on the reading 6.5 on the writing and 6.5 on the speaking which is really easy to score let's see for CLB 9 now and for CLB 9 you have to score 8 points on the listening section of the IELTS seven points on the reading section of the IELTS and again seven on writing and seven on speaking All right so really there are about let's see 12 CLBs over here for the perfect 12 CLB score you'll have to get again a perfect IELTS score that's a nine on each of the listening reading writing and speaking section personally I have not taken the IELTS yet but I did take the TOEFL TOEFL is from 0 to 120 and I scored 119 so I'm pretty sure that if I take the IELTS I would score a CLB 12 right again CLB 11 and 12 are not given more points as compared to CLB 10 so if anyone is scoring CLB 10 he is just as good in terms of the points see the one mistake that people make over here is that they don't really take into account all of the points see if you have a CLB 10 or more you get 34 points for each section it's not just 34 points it's 34 points for each each section so you have four sections all right Le reading listening writing speaking so you will get 34 times 4 that many points you just add them to your score which you have been previously maintaining and this would be your actual score then all right so let's look at the next criteria over here we have again you know second official language this is for French but let's just say that you know you're not uh, very very proficient in French I mean, most people aren't so let's completely skip this criteria all right let's, let's just assume that you do not know any any French all right now Canadian work experience notice that it says Canadian work experience and not just work experience in any country all right so you even if you have work experience in in let's say India in USA in Nigeria really it can be any place uh, 
it doesn't count. It's as simple as that. So what you want to do is, if you do not have any work experience in, in Canada, just skip this section. But really, if you do, again, it depends on whether you have a spouse or not. On the basis of that, and on the basis of how many years of experience you have, you will be awarded points again. All right. Now let's look at. In case you have a spouse, all right. In most cases, your points were being, you know, your points were kind of less as compared to whether you would have a spouse. But in this case, if you have a spouse, you can have some advantages and you can gain some points. For instance, if your spouse is, you know, a secondary school uh, pass out, she has that credential. In that case you will gain two points. Again, if she has done a post-secondary program of two years, you will gain eight points and so on and so forth. The details are on your screen again. All right. See, this is all again about the spouse, uh, her speaking ability and what kind of a CLB score she gets. On the basis of that, again, you can score a few points. All right. Now, again, it's the same for the work experience part again. It's really about your spouse and not you. So again, the details are on the screen, but most of you watching would not have a spouse. So I'm just going to skip this section. Again, if you do, you can just check out the section, calculate your scores accordingly. Okay. Now, we are going to talk about these transferable skills. Really, now this is the time where your, your education, your work experience is being taken into account. Doesn't matter which country, which which you know place you're from it will be taken into account all right let's see okay if you uh, skill transfer ability factors all right if you have educational level with proficient language skills you know uh, depending on your CLB you will be given your uh, points all right so if you have let's say a CLB 9 and or more like I said CLB 9 or more would be really good uh, I'm, I'm hoping and most of you guys will be aiming for at least CLB 10 Right. If you have a CLB, let's say nine, and you have uh, two or more post-secondary program credentials, and at least one of these credentials was issued by uh, on completion of a post-secondary program three years or longer, in that case you will be given 50 points. Okay. So again, it's really about how you are, uh, you know, w what your profile is. Okay. So you can just have, you know, post-secondary program credentials, and. Uh, all of these are just one year long or less than you know two or three years long so in that case uh, really your scores would be 25 if you have a CLB 9 so according to the chart you can just calculate your scores again let's look at the work experience in Canada and a post-secondary degree now in this case if you have work experience in Canada it would count a lot more alright so again based on your CLB scores and uh, points for education plus one year work experience in Canada, you get these scores. And points for education plus two years work experience in Canada, you get these scores. All right. So you can just take a look at these. Okay. Uh, now the foreign work experience proficient language skills. In this case, your foreign work experience means any other country than Canada that you might have worked in. That work experience is being taken into account. Now, depending on the work experience you have in another country and if you also have work experience in Canada on the basis of that you will be given out points again alright so you have the points on your screen let's say that you have two years of work experience in Canada and two years of work experience in some other country in that case you will be given 25 points alright great let's look at the other criteria there's only a few other criteria really if you have let's say uh, a brother or a sister living in Canada on the basis of that depending on whether he or she is a permanent citizen or not you may gain 15 points all of these are just bonus points and most of you guys won't really look look forward to these points but I think you should pay special attention to the second last one if you have arranged employment if you have a job offer in your hands again you get 200 points on that all right provincial or territorial nomination you get 600 points if you do have it Really, this is something that I'll cover in some other video, but that's not something you should really engage yourself in because gaining provincial nomination for any of you guys who know this, it's 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 a very time-taking process, and I don't think you need these points anyway. All right, all right. So that was a quick video on how the Canadian immigration system works and really the express entry system, especially the federal skilled workers program. And for any of you guys who are interested in 
videos about other sections or other immigration programs, you can just let me know in the comment section down below and I will make sure that I make a video on that. Alright guys, if, you, if you'd like to know about how I scored a 119 on the TOEFL or any other details of my profile, you can go right ahead and follow me on Instagram and talk to me directly right over there. You can also join the WhatsApp or Facebook groups, the links are in the description down below and you can just click on them and join them right away. Any other questions that I failed to answer in this video, you can again mention them in the comments down below and I will try my best to answer these questions as soon as possible.